Welcome to this video lesson. In this video lesson, we will be looking at coordinate geometry. We're going to start off by talking about coordinate geometry. And some of the stuff that we want to cover in this lesson is how do we actually show what a point is or which point we're talking about and how do we actually graphically represent that. And part of doing proper mathematics and communicating it properly is being able to use proper form and also being able to use different form and go from one form to another. So let's focus on that for now. On the right hand side of the screen over here, what we have is called the Cartesian plane. And Cartesian plane allows us to represent points or different functions graphically. So it's divided into four regions by the x-axis right here. So let's write that down. So this is the x-axis and the y-axis over here. And we usually label this as y over here and x over here. In application type problems, y generally represents the dependent variable and x represents the independent variable. But we'll get there later. So the Cartesian plane again is divided into four regions by the x and y axis. The first region over here, which is the top right hand corner, is called quadrant 1. And going anti-clockwise, we go to quadrant 2, quadrant 3, and quadrant 4. The center here where the x-axis and the y-axis are actually meeting or intersecting is called the origin. And sometimes what we use to represent this is an empty circle. And there's different ways of representing this. Sometimes we don't put anything in there. But this is generally called the origin. So I'm just going to label that here. To represent points, we often use letters, and we use capital letters. So here we have three points, point A, point B, and point C. And what we do to write their coordinates, we write it as in, inside of brackets, and we write the x-coordinate first, followed by a comma, and followed by the y-coordinates. So to label this, this here is name of the point. So this is point C. The 4 is the x coordinate. And the negative 1 is the y coordinate. So now let's talk about how do we actually plot these on the graph. So point A over here has x coordinate of 1 and y coordinate of 3. So to show that, we always start from the origin. And if the x value is positive, we move to the right by that amount. And if it's negative, we move left with for that amount. And if the y value is positive from the origin, we move up by that amount. And if it's negative, we would actually go down by that amount. So let's put this into our graph. So for point A, our x coordinate is 1. So we would have to move right by 1 from the origin. So I'm going to go right. And our y coordinate is 3. So from where I stop there, I'm going to move up by a value of 3. So 1, 2, and 3. I am going to put a point right over here. I am going to call it A. And I will write the coordinates as 1, 3. Again, note that from the origin, this point, o this point over here, which is A, is 1 to the right, so looking at the y-axis, it only goes right by 1. And it goes up from the x-axis or the origin by a value of 1, 2, and 3. And that's why the x-coordinate is 1 and the y-coordinate is 3. Let's now plot the next few points. Point B has x-coordinate coordinate of negative 1, so I would have to go negative 1 from the origin 
and then go up by five. So I have to go up one, two, three, four, and five. And I'm going to put a point right there. I am going to call it B, and I'm going to write the coordinate as negative one and five. And this time I move to the left because my X value was actually a negative value. Finally, my last point is 4 and negative 1. So my x coordinates, so starting from the origin, I will have to move right by a value of 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. And then for, for my y coordinate, I have to go down by a value of 1 because it's actually negative 1. So I go down here, and my point should be uh, put right over there. So I will move once again. 1, 2, 3, and 4, and down by 1, put a point right there, and call it C, and my C has X coordinate of 4, and Y coordinate of negative 1. Now, the origin over here is right at the center, and the center or the origin point is always at 0, 0, because when we look at it, it's the intersection of X and Y axis, and this point has not moved at all in the x-axis, and it has not moved at all in the y-axis. So the origin, often written as letter O, has x-coordinate of 0 and y-coordinate of 0. So this is our origin point. We can also look at which point is located in which quadrant. So our first point over here, which is point A, is actually located in quadrant 1. In quadrant 1, all the x-coordinates are positive because it's right to the y-axis, right of the y-axis. And all the y-values or all the y-coordinates are also positive because they are above the x-axis. So point A is located in quadrant 1. Point B is located right here. That's in quadrant number 2. And you can see that for quadrant 2, all the x values are negative because all the x coordinates are to the left of the y axis. And all the y values or all the y coordinates are positive because they are above the x axis. So this point B is located in quadrant 2. Now, point C over here is located in quadrant number 4. You can see that in quadrant number 4, all my x values are to the right of the y-axis, meaning that they're all, they all should be positive, and all the y values are below the x-axis. So from the origin, you actually have to move down to get there. So that means that they will get taken negative value. So my C is actually in quadrant number 4. If we were to put a point in quadrant number 3, both x values and y values would actually be negative because from the origin you would have to move left, meaning your x will be negative, and from the origin you would have to move down, meaning that your y value would also be negative. Okay, let's put what we just learned into practice. So we got a question, and in this question we have Olivia who has a saving of $20, and every month she gains $5 from helping with chores around the house. Now, first thing we want to do is identify what is the dependent variable and what is the independent variable, and then we're going to use the information to plot how much money she has over the next 10 months, assuming that she does not spend any money. So we have to make sure that we are reading the question very carefully in order to be able to identify the dependent and independent variable in this case. So Olivia has a saving of $20. So we're talking about money. So one of the variables that we're talking about, one of the things that is actually changing is money. 
And we're talking about every month. So the other thing that's changing is the number of months, so in this case, time. So our two variables that we're dealing with in this questions in this question are time and money. So again, we're dealing with time and money. So Olivia gains money, $5 every month. So is money dependent on how many months are passing or are the number of months that are passing are dependent on how much money she's getting? So in this case, what is actually dependent on the other variable? It is really difficult to say that the time is dependent on how much money she's gaining because time is going to pass by no matter what. However, as time is passing, she is getting some money. So the dependent variable is money and it's dependent on the independent variable because time really isn't dependent on the money in this case. So our dependence here will be money. The unit is in dollars. And our independent is time. And the unit is months. So now that we have identified our variables and broken it down to dependent and independent, we're going to use this information to plot how much money she has for the next 10 months, assuming that she does not spend any money. So we're just assuming that she's just gaining money. To do this, what we're going to start off with is table of values. To draw a table of values, we just simply draw a table. And in our table, we want to have our independent variable, in this case, time, when it's with its unit of months. And we want to have our dependent variable, which is money, always indicating the unit with, in this case, dollar. And we usually do this inside brackets. There are different ways and different formats of representation, but we are going to write the variable normally and put the unit inside brackets. Now, at the beginning, before, uh, so at month zero or at time zero, she actually has $20. So when time is zero, Olivia actually has $20. And after one month, she gains $5. So she actually will have $25 after the first month. And then after month two, she will have another $5. So she would have to have 30 And this will keep going. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten, and she will have thirty-five, forty, forty-five, fifty, fifty-five, sixty, sixty-five, and seventy dollars after ten months, or when ten months actually reaches. So we talked about different ways of representation, and obviously one of, one really good a good way and a very common way of representing data is a table. And in a table, we clearly identify what the time is. We clearly identify what how much money she has. And that's a really, really good method of showing mathema mathematics. However, some people do prefer to actually see it within a graph. So to do this, we're going to do one thing first. We're going to change everything over here into points, and then we are going to represent those points within our graph. So when we are graphing things, often our independence variable, in this case the time, goes on the x-axis, and our dependent variable goes on the y-axis over here. So every single 
data point that I have here could be represented as a point. Often, or, or usually when we have a graph, um, we use a point and we say point has an x-coordinate, which often goes here, and y-coordinate, which goes here. In this case, my x, which is on the x-axis, will actually represent time, which is my independent variable. So this one over here, whatever this value is, it's the time, and whatever this second value is right here is the amount of money. So for our first set of data over here, which says time is zero and money is 20, the way to put that in a, a, as, a, as a point, what we will have to do is put time zero and money 20. And this would be my point, let's, we can call it point A, or we can name this anything, but we're going to call it point A in this case. So let's actually label our graph also so that we can kind of get an idea of, where, of what is our dependent variable and what is our independent variable. We said that in our graph, the y-axis represents the dependent variable, so that's money. So we would actually have to... Actually, one other thing that we will notice is we don't actually have any time which is negative. It doesn't really make that much sense to talk about negative uh, time. Sometimes it does for certain applications, but not, at, not for, our, for our application. And the amount of money that Olivia has, luckily, is always positive. She, so she's mm, she doesn't have she doesn't actually owe any money. So we don't have to use this region of our graph. So for our graph, what I will actually do is kind of cross out this regions. So we're actually only dealing with this region over here, which is actually quadrant one. And to label things properly, I am going to label the x-axis, which is this region over here, as time and make sure that the unit is there because if somebody else is watching this or looking at this graph, they need to know exactly what my x variable is representing or what is my dependent variable and what is its unit. And the Y here will be money, and its unit is actually dollars. So I can put that in here. Now, when you're graphing, always try your best to use as much as graph as much as of the graph as you can. So in this case, over here I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is excellent. I have exactly ten. 10 months so I can actually start off and label my x-axis right here is the origin this is after two months this is after four months this is after six months this is after eight months and this is after 10 months when you're scaling and showing your scales try to go up by factors of either one which is what we're doing here we go one two three four uh, go by factors of two or by factors of five. It's really weird and not very common to use factors of three. So usually people don't go by zero, three, six, nine, and 12. It's always best to go up by factors of one, five, and one, two, and five. So I'm gonna write that here, one, two, and five for scaling. In terms of money, we can see that we kind of start off with z with twenty dollars, and we go up to seventy. So looking at our graph, we we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we have a total of ten. So we can actually go up to hundred, starting with zero. So zero, one, 
to sorry, sorry, 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100. And that works really well because we're using most of our graph by using that scale. And we're using scale, which is kind of a multiplication of 1, 2, and 5. 2 times 5 gives us 10, and that could be our scaling over here. So we're going to go by... And I'm not going to label everything. It's just a little bit of extra work if you're labeling all the points. And it it is really unnecessary. So in this case, I am just going to label 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100. Let's now write all the data points in um, point format. And then from there, we're actually going to go and plot it. So our point B is going to be 125, meaning that at time is equal to 1, we have $25. So point B, I am going to use, let's use pink. B is 125. C is at month 2, I will have $30. At month 3, or sorry, Olivia, not me. Um, at point 4 or after 4 months, she will have $40. Five forty five six fifty seven fifty five eight sixty nine sixty five and at month 10, $70. Now that I have all my points, I can start plotting them. You don't actually always have to put the letters and actually put the letters down on your graph. Sometimes it's very helpful. Sometimes you don't really need it because it just, there's just too many things in the graph and it just makes it less concise. And being concise and having a nice diagram or graph is one of the ways we want to make sure that we're representing our work. So in this case, I will just plot the points and I won't actually show the coordinates, but I will show the letters so you can kind of get an idea about where each point is. I'm going to use, what color should I use? I will use, I will continue to use pink. So at time zero, so right here at time zero, the amount of money is $20. So right here, time zero, there's no movement in the x-axis or time axis. I have to go up by 20. So right here, I will have my first point, and I will label it, and I will call it A. And then point B, at one month, I will have 25. So 25 is between... 30 and 20, so that's point B. And then at month 2, I will have 30. At month 3, I will have 35. At month 4, I have 40. So just to make sure that we're on the right track over here, month 4 over here, we're talking about point E. My time is 4, so that means I'm going 1, 2, 3, 4, and the amount of money that I have is 40, so that's 10, 20, 30, and 40 right here. So that looks good. So this is E, and you can kind of see a pattern. The pattern kind of continues, and let's just continue the pattern and then just do a check on another point just to make sure that we are moving in the, in the correct direction. So E, F, G, H, I, J, and K is actually our last point. Let's just make sure that point K is properly located. We have month or time 10, so we're going to the right by 10, and we have, sorry, we have the money, the amount of money is 70, so that's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and 70, which is exactly where the 70 is. So this is uh, correct. So now we have the table, we have the graph. In th at this point, is it a good idea to actually connect the points? Well, 
we could just to see what the trend will look like. So we could actually draw a line through uh, these points over here, but will it be meaningful? So if, for example, if you're looking at halfway through month four, which so right at month four she had forty dollars and right at month five she had forty five dollars but in between nothing actually changed it's not as though she gained like a dollar here a dollar here a dollar here a dollar here and then added up to five dollars by the end so she had five more dollars from point e to f she had forty dollars here and then she gained all of a sudden another five dollars over here so she got 45 so it's not actually you can you can model this and see how much money she will have later but it's not a good way to it's not accurate enough to actually say that she ha would have money in between month or she's actually gaining like cents or dollars in between here so this is another way of representing the set of data and looking at it as a graph you can see that this is a nice trend that she is gaining more and more money and eventually this will keep going up and up and up so using this graph is a really easy way of actually looking at our data and see whether there's a upward trends or, or a positive correlation or if there's a negative correlation if this was a negative correlation then she will have to look at her finances and figure out what is another what what's another way of actually improving it so in this case her finances are pretty good and she's moving in the right direction something that we will talk about a little bit later is actually a rate at which things increase or decrease or how does how is the rate at which your dependent variable changing with respect to your independent variable so to do this in this case for this particular case and again we will talk about this again every month so f let's say from month 0 to 1 from here to here the dependent variable changes by a value of 5, whereas the independent changes by a value of 1. So the rates, I'm just, going, I'm just going to write that over here, the rate at which the amount of money is changing is $5 for every one month. So actually, just to write the unit, I'm just going to do it differently. I'm just going to say, five over one dollars per month or to simplify this five over one any number divided by one is just five it's, it's just itself so in this case it's just five dollars per month so this is another very important value that we'll be looking at and again that is how much our dependent variable is changing with respect to our independent variable